This is the latest offering from the folks over at Inov. It's the K7, a dual 2K motorcycle dash cam system. It's got EIS stabilization, but only at 1080, and better GPS. But is it any good? Peasants, bloody peasants. The K7 comes in the usual high quality packaging and presentation you expect from Inov. Inside you'll find both cameras securely housed in a protective foam layer. The cameras and DVR module are made from high quality aluminium alloy and feature LVDS cabling with shielding, allowing high speed data transfer in a compact form. All connections are colour coded and weather resistant, helping to make the install as painless as possible. An install vid is coming soon folks. Don't worry. The DVR module facilitates SD cards up to 512 gigabytes, which will give you around 20 hours of continuous recording at 2K resolution at 30 frames per second. The K7 features a remote, same as the previous K3 and K5 systems, allowing you to monitor system performance, mark specific sections of footage, take pics, and more. The GPS has been upgraded on the K7 to 10 hertz, giving high speed recording of every aspect of your journey. Now the box is of bits. The K7 comes with a wiring harness needed to power the unit. This connects to your bike's battery and comes with the terminal connectors already in place. As before with the K3 and K5 systems, the K7 comes with a built-in lavalier mic, meaning you can pop it in your helmet and vlog directly onto the DVR module, or simply use it to record the engine noise of your bike. The pack comes with a selection of mounting options for the camera, from L brackets to quality 3M sticky pads. There's a solution available to cater for the majority of standard mounting options. Lastly, you get some stickers and the all-important destructions. But who bothers with them? So, the install. Now, I've fitted the K3 and the K5 to previous GSs. It's generally fairly straightforward, but on this one, on the 1300, there's really not much room underneath the seats at all. Now, there's a few differences at the front and there's definitely some differences at the rear. It basically ended up in a too difficult box for me. I just couldn't be bothered with the grief. So I gave the professionals a call up at a bike thing and Steve and Tom took care of it all for me. I've recorded everything. There'll be a vid coming out on the installer of the K7 on this bike, the R1300GS. That'll be coming out either next or in a couple of weeks. You can definitely do it yourself, folks, but uh, for a lummox like me, it was just a lot less grief to let the professionals take care of it, and they've done a cracking job. Drop Steve a line up at a bike thing, links on the screen now, and they can even supply the K7 for you as well. Tell them teapot sent you. Now, there were a few issues with the installation of the K7 on the 1300, namely the yellow wire, which is the triggered which is the triggered live feed. That actually wasn't long enough. Tom, a bike thing, he runs, he takes a, the triggered live feed from the front up near the headlight. To do that, he had to extend the yellow wire by about two feet. Obviously, if your soldering's up to par and you know what you're doing with electrics, you can do that yourself. I'm a mere Neanderthal, so I just let the professionals take care of that. Also, for mounting of the rear camera, again, the 1300 is a little bit different to the 1250 and the 1200, and it needed a small spacer, which doesn't come in the kit from Inov, but Tom up at a bike thing had a lovely box of tricks and he had one there. So again, another reason why I'd just go to the professionals and get it done properly. Up to you though, you can fit it yourself, probably give yourself a couple of hours to get it all done. Okay, right, I'm going to show you how to connect to the Wi-Fi on the in-off. So, you need to go to your phone Wi-Fi settings, look for the in-off, in-off K7. Now, the default password is 1 to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This all comes in the destructions that you get. Boom, there we go, bang, we're in. So that's us now connected. Now, if I go... You need to download the Inov app. Again, if you go on the destructions, uh, allow full access. Yeah, allow. So if I go onto that, so you can see. Hiya! So this main one is uh, the front, and then this inset one, that, is the back. So we can change that if you want by touching that top right button so we can 
change it so now the main camera is the rear and the inset one is the front or you can make it all front all rear but I like to have it front with a little bit of rear <laughs> but don't worry about it because obviously when it records it's recording full screen so you're seeing all of the front and then you'll also have a file showing all of the rear so don't worry about any of that uh, let's have a look here in the settings you can change your password uh, frequency 5G you can change it to 2.4 if you wanted resolution I have it set at 2K30 but you can do 1080 at 60 frames per second uh, this one here 1080 30 uh, EIS that EIS is the stabilization image stabilization and that is only available when you downgrade to 1080 resolution at 30 frames per second bitrate here you can only have low medium or high loop recording well you want it to continually loop if you don't want it to continually loop and you don't want any chance of it overwriting any of the footage on you there you set it off it's currently at one minute or you can put it at three minutes five minutes i'm going to put it at three minutes uh, time watermark you can have the date and time or just the date or you can switch it all off I like date and time on my footage because if this is going to be used it's going to be because something's happened and it's going to be for something like an insurance claim so I want the date and time on there mic volume from previous experience 2 is a good setting to have here the mic is under the seat you could run the cable up and into your helmet and vlog with it if you wanted speed display you can turn that on or off you can set your units at kilometers per hour or miles per hour gps uh, again you can have your gps coordinates showing up on the footage or you can switch that off if you want watermark text you can have whatever you like i'm going to put teapot one boom oh let's just have teapot Done. Okay, so my watermark is now going to be teapot rather than in of. Parking monitor, I want that switched on. Gravity sensor, again from previous experience. Two's okay, maybe one might actually be um, even better. There's all sorts here, there's loads of stuff. Just have a play. But now I'm happy, let's hit the road. So, how does it actually perform? Excuse the state of the office, much like my life at the moment, it's in utter chaos, but let's just draw a discreet veil over that. Okay, so, here we go. This is us at 2K at 30 frames per second. No stabilization at this. It's actually pretty good. I'll do some comparisons in a minute with the 1080 at stabilization, also with the K5, K3, that sort of stuff. But you can see here, I think the coloring's really good. So if I stop it, if I just freeze frame, you can see here we can read the number plates fairly well. What are we looking at there? November uniform, 6 6, Juliet, no November, Victor on the left, Yankee 5, uh, Sierra, Lima, Juliet over on the right. What you need to remember, folks, is this sort of stuff, this isn't as crucial with dash cam systems because if we're ever going to need these dash cams, there's generally been some sort of contact which would suggest we're in close proximity and stationary, even if only for a couple of frames. So we should be able to grab those number plates without issue. Obviously, there could be times when you're not going to be able to have grabbed the number plate, so this sort of footage could come into its own then. This is us in streets, broad daylight, good sunny day. What we like here if we pause. Again, November, Victor 23, Echo Alpha, Oscar. So if we move on to the 1080 with EIS stabilization. Well, we can see there, that's fairly easy to read. Uh, Papa X-Ray 1-4, Delta, Delta Foxtrot. This is evening, sort of just as the sun's going down. Again, that's very easy to read. So that EIS stabilization really comes to the fore when you grab the stills here. Yeah, that's actually a lot better. So even though it's not quite as good resolution, this is only 1080 resolution, because of the EIS stabilization, when it comes to grabbing a still, so say, say you've had a collision uh, and the car's gone, you know, the other vehicle involved has uh, Foxtrot Oscar out the scene, it's disappeared out the scene. 
you could maybe check your dash cam footage just to see, right, just before that collision or maybe as the car or the vehicle was disappearing, you might be able to do a freeze frame and grab that registration plate. So let's do a little comparison. So there we go. Here we've got on the left 1080 at 30 with sta stabilization, on the right 2K at 30. So both exactly the same frame rates, one's 1080, one's 2K. 1080 is obviously stabilized, 2K isn't, both in broad daylight. But as you can see there, I'd say it's actually easier to read the number plate with the 2K now. Is there much in it? Do you know what? I, I don't think there is. I think the coloring is better at 2K. What about, okay, so again, here we go. This is uh, sort of more built up areas, if you like, sort of slower speeds, not motorway speeds. What we got here uh, on the left, I can make that out, I think just, but it's not crystal clear, is it? Golf November 5.8. Ooh, gosh, this is like doing the optician eye chart test, isn't it? What about the one on the right, 2K? Uh, yeah, Yankee Foxtrot 7.0, X-Ray Hotel Lima. So that's without stabilization. That's at 32 miles an hour. Uh, the other one was at 31 miles an hour. So they're the same speed. Okay, the one on the left is probably at slightly uh, later in the day, so lower sunlight, which does affect the picture quality for sure. But on this time, the 2K at 30 with no stabilization, that is actually giving a better result. But what about at nighttime? Daytime. The Inov K7, that's currently at 1080 resolution, 30 frames per second with the EIS, EIS stabilization on. So this is us, we're in somewhere with no street lights at all. So this is pitch black other than the 1300GS headlights. So let's go up here. So this is a real bumpy back road. Now the Ace Pros have um, low light stabilization feature, so they're stabilized. How does the Inov look? I mean the Inov, it's entirely dependent really on its mounting, I think, personally. I've got the rear camera mounted where everyone will normally put that, so just uh, above the rear indicator and I've mounted the front underneath the front beak because on the 1300, there's nowhere really suitable to mount it. You could use the sticky uh, 3M pad, I suppose, to stick it on the beak, on the top, but it's fairly in your face. I quite like the almost covert nature of sticking it underneath. This is just a little bit of motorway riding. How is it? with number plates, how are we doing there, can we, uh, if we pause, can we see everything okay, what about in the rear cam, is that picking up number plates okay, do we get glow off any of my rear lights, what about if I hit the indicators, is there anything showing on that, I'll be hitting my brake soon as we come towards the roundabout, how does the front look with the headlights and the spots actually? I've got spots on this as well. How does it look? Okay, so we just indicate right into the into lane two. So coming up to the roundabout now. Braking. How is that on the rear ca camera? And then there's some indicator as well. Coming off here, bit of left indicator, how's that looking? It's off now. More street lights here, how is that? How are we doing there? All good? What I'll try next is I want to try um, not only the Inovs back at 2.7k, but I also want to try the microphone for the Inov as well see how that sounds. Back to recording 2.7 at 30 on Inov K7. 2.7 at 30 on the Instat Ace Pros, front and rear, in low light. Now I've also got the Inov mic up in my lid, 
So this is me talking on the in of mic. Uh, how does that sound? How's everyone doing? And this is me talking on the uh, Insta Ace Pro Lab mic. How does that sound? How's everyone doing? Okay, turn into a little back road again, same back road as before. There's no street lights here at all, none whatsoever. So how are both cameras coping? Obviously the in of the K7, no longer has the EIS stabilization feature, but it's now 2.7K resolution rather than 1080. Is there any difference either in stabilization or in camera quality and picture quality? You tell me, tell me what you think. Okay, here we go. We're just coming back out onto some motorway there, some overhead lights. What difference does it make then between stabilized and unstabilized? 1080, 2.7, at night, what's it like? So this is currently at level one. Again, 50 mile an hour. Let me, let me just wake out to here get up to motorway speeds all right so that's us at motorway speeds how does that sound what's it like what does the in of sound like can it cope with this sort of uh, level of wind turbulence it's lovely glorious british summer weather here awesome isn't it just the way to go into june fantastic my car key ride's gone all green now uh, no, I'm not dyslexic, folks. I've not got one of those filters on it. The uh, screen's just gone on the blink. It's about two weeks old, three weeks old. Only to uh, contact the seller on Amazon where I bought it. Okay, so what was that audio like? How did that work? I'm gonna just change the audio up to level five. Give me two ticks and I'll do just that. Okay, helmet cam, cut the cam. So you can hear there, the only real usable audio level for me on the Inov K7 is at level one, the quietest one. Don't be fooled by testing it in your garage or when you're stationary because level two, sometimes even level three can sound fine. The second you start moving and you get the ambient wind noise and things like that, all the, the volume levels go to pot. So test it whilst you're actually riding, if you're gonna put that mic up into your lid. If it's just going under the seat to capture engine noise or uh, you know ambient noise when you're on the bike, then definitely level two you can get away with ish it's probably better for picking up any vocals that are said when the bike is stationary but if it's going up into your lid i would strongly suggest level one okay what about that remote how do you work the remote when you're on the bike funny you should ask that okay i'll just push the button on the remote which should log this section so that's how you do it. You just push the silver button and you can see that the green video camera is now flashing. GPS is solid, so that shows we've got a full GPS signal. The Wi-Fi, blue Wi-Fi, uh, that is flashing at the moment because I've not connected to my phone. So once you've got those files, how do you access those files? Well, you have to go into the app, you open up the app, you find the file that you want, and then you can download that to your device. Now, this is real time on here. This is actually how long it took to download it. Way quicker than the K5 was and the K3, much, much quicker, really easy to use. And that's it, and that then just gets saved into your uh, phone's photo album. So how does the Inov K7, how does that compare to some of its competition or some of its predecessors? Well, I've had the C5, I've had the K2, the K3 and the K5. So I've got some comparisons here between the K3 and the K5 systems. Have a look, see what you think. So you can see the K7's on the left, the K3's over on the right. K7 is at 2K. K3's at 1080, both are at 30 frames per second, but there's a clear difference there, clear improvement, K7 is definitely way better. This is the K7 and the K5, K5 is a 4K system, K7's 2K, both at 30 frames per second, 
Again, I think uh, I, I think the colouring's better in the K7, but there's not that much of a difference there. Now I just chucked this one in because I had I have reviewed that Techologic DC1. That was the little helmet camera that has two lenses, one face in the front, one face in the back. Uh, it's very basic image on this, bit of an unfair comparison to be honest. K7 is 2K, the DC1 that's 1080. But here we go, have a little look. I mean there's clear differences there in my opinion. K7 wins that hands down. Next up, the Chiggies. Now obviously the Chiggies are taking the BMW world by storm at the moment. Everyone seems to be getting them fitted. They are, the Chiggies, if you're not familiar, they do a dash cam option with integrated screen, which then has Android and uh, Apple CarPlay featured in it. So you can then stream or screencast, whatever you call it, your uh, navigation, whatever you're using, Google Maps, Waze, Kalimoto, lots of other different ones. You can cast that up onto the uh, LCD screen and that's it up there, like a dash on your bike. So what's the quality of their dash cam systems? So a massive thanks to Adventure Brett, ADV underscore Brett here from Instagram. Brett's down in, uh, in Oz and he gave me some files from his system just to have a little comparison. So obviously this is the K7 here. Let's put the two of them side by side and have a look. Chiggy is 1080, 30. The K7 is 2K at 30. Obviously Oz is much better lighting. It's bright sunshine down there. But if we pause both of these and have a little look, I'd say they're fairly comparable there. It's not too much in that. Probably the K7 is easier to read, but then kind of unfair because it's a blue background with white writing. Massive thanks, Brett. Thanks for giving us that. Over onto Pete English. Now Pete's giving me uh, his Chiggy files, that's Peter Brownsmith doing something to a bag. Uh, again, both uh, 30 frames per second, Chiggy again is only 1080. Both are 30 frames per second, but the Chiggy is only 1080, whereas the K7, that's 2K. K7 image is definitely just that little bit clearer, a little bit sharper, but again, there's not a huge amount in it, to be perfectly honest. The K7, the Inov K7 dash cam system, that's retailing for £329.95. Let's have a look, what is the Chiggy going for? So the Chiggy here in the UK, that's currently going for £479.95 to £526.90, including that. Let's just look for the built-in storage because you don't get an SD card with the Inov. Uh, what is that going for? £479.95. So that's for the dash cams and the screen, which has the integrated Apple CarPlay, uh, Android, whatever Android is. So you get a little bit more for the Chiggy, but it is only 1080 resolution. And as we've seen, I think the K7 beats that in terms of image quality. So what are my final thoughts on it? Um, I definitely recommend you have a dash cam system of some kind on your bike. This day and age, first thing insurance asks is if there's any issue at all involving another car, they'll ask is there CCTV generally? So it's good to have it there. K3 system is great. Uh, the K5 system, again, that's great, but it's quite hard to mount because of that big front camera. Uh, this K7 is sort of best of both worlds. It's the same form sort of features of the K3 with the two smaller cameras and the DVR uh, module in the middle, and it's 2K resolution. You can stabilize it obviously at 1080, but does that make that much of a difference? It really depends on the lighting at the time. And to be honest, we've got no control over that, how, do we? Because it could be a beautiful bright sunny day out there, but the actual incident might happen inside a tunnel or under an underpass or under some trees or something like that. So uh, K7 at the moment, I would say is the best one out of the range uh, for Inov themselves. Watch this space though, because Inov are soon to be releasing, in fact, it looks like it's even released now, the N1, which is basically gonna be their version of the Chiggy. And have a look at that, £334.95. I am not sponsored by Inov at all. The channel used to be, but we're not anymore. Okay, 1080 as well, so same as the Chiggy. Basically, it looks identical to the, the Chiggy. 
but over 100 quid cheaper. I've just noticed the M1's got a parking monitor. Did I mention the parking mode on the K7? I don't think I did, but it's the same as the K3 and the K5. It's got a parking mode, which you can switch on and off. I would keep it switched on if I were you. Basically, it just monitors the bike while you're away. So any sort of movement of your bike will automatically wake up the uh, dash cam system. And as long as the culprits move in front of either the front or the rear camera, you've got them. If you fancy getting your hands on the Innov K7, then make sure you check out the Innov website, whether the UK one or the .com version, both links will be down below. Tell them Teapot One sent you. You used to get a discount, I'm not sure if you still do, but details will be down below. Big thanks to Innov for supplying the K7 unit for test. Folks, hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, to share. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Tell all your friends about the channel. Keep looking after those that you love. Get on out there whenever you can, but most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!